Peter the Penguin. We're going to have some fun. Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and little Peter the Penguin's with us, with his little baby. And, well, last week he was called Jimmy, <laughs> but now this little baby, Peter's little baby, is called Pepe. Pepe the little baby. So I want to say thank you to Jess, because Jess named him. Um, as soon as I heard, as soon as I read the name Pepe, I knew that this was little Pepe. <laughs> He's cool, isn't he? Little Pepe. He's got really nice little hands as well, and feet. I like the fact that he's got little feet. So, well, what we're doing here, this is week number four of the Learning Procreate. And I'm working through the book Beginner's Guide to Digital Painting in Procreate by 3D Toto Publishing. And, well, we're on to the, what we're on to now, but the way, I, way I've left it this week is we've made it to the projects. So next week, I'm going to start going through the projects. And the first one is going to be an illustration with Izzy Burton. So hopefully, I don't know what this is, but what I'm hoping is it's we've got to try and recreate this piece of artwork. That's what I'm hoping. So these are all the little things we're going to be doing. So what I'm going to do on this video is I'll talk a little bit about these projects at the end. About what I'm ex well, I'll do it now. What I'm really excited for is this one. I can't wait to do this one. This one's going to be fun. The first one will be fun, I think. But I'm really excited for this one. This one looks like fun. This one's going to be cool because it's a character. This one, I can't really see what the image is. But I like the style of it. This one, I can't wait for this one because I love nature. These two, I'm not so excited for. Mainly because of the subject matter. But I love the style of that one. Especially if we've got like little creature down here. Crocodile or something. But this one, I think it's a vehicle. So of all these, the one I'm least excited for is the vehicle one. But what I've noticed is sometimes you learn the most from the things you're not looking forward to. <laughs> but the one I'm looking forward to the most is this one. So that'll be the second one. So that's where we got up to. So last week I left it over here, which was on the transform options. Well, the transform section. There's a couple of things I've got to talk about. Ah, the first thing is, last week I was talking about masks and clipping masks. And I was, I was confused. What I, done is, what I did was I went back through the book, reread it, and actually played around with it a lot more. And what I come to now is, this is what I think now. So, masks allows you to erase information. Or, well, masks allow you to erase from a layer without actually erasing it. And clipping masks allow you to paint on top of a layer without actually painting on top of it. So it's almost like you're sort of, you can erase things, but still keep the original layer. And here you can sort of completely change the color of it or mess it up, but you've still got it. So these are, I understand it a lot more now, and I can see why you would, why you would use them for different things. Like let's say I made a little drawing of a, of a net or something, or no, I was thinking like a wind. I was thinking like a house. Imagine I've drawn a house with the windows, and I'm thinking to myself, do I want the windows to be see-through? Well, you could put a mask on and delete the windows, and you could sort of compare it, toggle the mask on and off. You could sort of see, do I like it like that or not? But you haven't actually deleted the windows from the original drawing. That's brilliant. In clipping masks, I'm always using clipping masks. Well, I use those for like shading. So, but that's cool. So I'm quite excited now. And what I like is the fact that I didn't really understand what masks were until I tried to explain them. <laughs> How cool is that? That's the thing they say about they. They say the best way to learn is well, what they say is the what they say is the best way to learn is to sort of teach. I'm not I'm not teaching here, but I'm sort of. I suppose you are. Well, eh? I don't know. I'm just learning. But the thing is, that's why I like making videos. Because when you're talking about things, you sort of... It's then that you really understand. You you, you understand if you understand. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's cool, isn't it? So what we're doing on this one is... This video here, I'll go through the notes in a minute as well. And I'll also go through all the little my drawings. So th these are the drawings I did this week. On the thing. I'll go through them all in a minute, 
We've even got like a little thing with a pita. Pita and Pepe. <laughs> it's quite cool. So what we did was we did selections. All the different selections. That was really cool actually. And the thing is that's, that's fun about it. I'm actually using all these things now. And I'm quite amazed at how easy it's been to sort of do all these things. Because just a minute ago, like for the last couple of hours I've been doing some little drawings and I was using all the things that I've been learning. And that's the thing, this is another thing, you don't really know if you've learnt it until you start drawing. Because it's when you're drawing that you start hitting problems. Like what I did was I did a little gesture of a swing but I had made it too high. So what I did was I had to cut the swing out and move it down a bit. And as I did it I thought, hey, that's what I was learning in here. So it's quite cool. It's quite, it is quite cool. We've got, we've got the, ah, I did do this last week. Silly. Yeah, I got up to that bit last week, didn't I? We did all that last week. So what we did, what this week was all about the adjustments. So we were doing the blurring. This goes into the quiz. So I'm still doing my little quizzes. So what I noticed this week was it was the first time the quizzes were not just about how to do something on the iPad. It was actually, I had to, I was asking myself, do I understand things? So I've, I've put here, what's the difference between Gaussian blur, motion blur, and perspective blur? This is the way I, I, I've remembered it. Gaussian blur is everything gets blurred, so it allows things to sort of pop, push things into the background, creating like distance between things. Motion is, is this is how I'm remembering it, left to right. So if you've got something moving, left or right, you're gonna, you are gonna, probably going to want to use the motion blur. Perspective blur is forwards and backwards. So what I did was, I've, I've been, I've, every day I've started here, before I've done anything, I said, do I understand what the difference is between these three blurs? And I, I do, because I've, I've remembered it here. And then, I, and, and then I was doing, can I blur a layer? So I had to go in and blur the layers. And then also there's one way you have to blur something with, without using masks as well. So all, all of a sudden I'm starting to sort of put these things together because I'm using the adjustments of blurring with the, with the um, what's it called, with the masks. So all of a sudden you start to see how these things are quite, because what happens is you're learning something and it seems really powerful, you then learn something else which seems powerful and then all of a sudden you put them both together it's even more powerful. So it's, it's quite cool. This is what I love about this book, is, is bringing everything in, in very simple little things, but it's all building up nicely. I think next week is going to be the proper test for this book when you're getting into the projects, because I'm a little bit worried, am I going to actually get confused so much that I won't be able to do it? But we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. So these are some of the other adjustments. This here was brilliant, the liquify. What what I put in my notes was, I, feel, I think I said I could spend hours doing this. I feel like I could have sat here for for eight. It was so fun. I'll go through the images in a minute. It was, it was fun it was. What I did was I drew a little Peter the penguin and I started liquefying him. <laughs> it was cool. There's some of the effects. It's like random, but you're also in control. This is because like you're using different things. So you, you're, you might use something that's going to pinch it. So you, you're in control of that because you know what you're doing. But also, it's, there's an element of randomness to the way it's doing it. it reminds me again of like um, doing abstract painting. Because you're in control of the paint, but the paint's also in control of itself. Especially like watercolour. Because you you're in control of the brush, but the paint's still got a, a sort of control of itself. We've got some colour things here. I'll have to talk about it in my notes, but some of the things have changed. One of the things they've done, which I don't understand, they've removed the option for previewing in these things, which I think that's a bit, um, a bit upsetting, because when you're playing around with these colours, playing with like the... What you're going to do is, I feel like it would be really nice to have the original colour side by side with the new colour. But you can't, well, at the moment it looks like you can't do that anymore. And there's another couple of things they changed as well. Oh, this here, recolour. Well, what happened is, this recolour is amazing. Look at this, look. 
what you can do is this is what a character looks like and it's on a flat layer and they said imagine if some your art director or something he says actually i want the color of that skin to be like that all you got to do is using the recolor option all you've got lit all you got to do is get all you got to do is tap the skin color and it will change it it's it's like that on flat layers as well but the thing was they've actually taken that out of the the thing so what happens now is watch this look if you go into the what's it called adjustments nope that's one <laughs> if you go into it action adjustments the recolor has it's not there look so what you have to what you have to do is you have to go into your actions i think it's preferences gesture controls and then in the quick you have to you have to put the quick the quick menu on and then what you do is the, the way i've done it is where's my thingy the way i've done it is i've got to hold down the modify button if i tap the screen it comes up with these and look there's actually an option for recolor but it doesn't come up as standard what you have to do is you have to hold your finger on it and find it in the list but the thing is it's still there so I think to myself, why did they take that out? Because it's, it's powerful, it is. I'll try to, I'll try, well, I'll try and do it here, look. Watch how powerful it is. If I um, put all that together, oh, where's the one that, this one? If I put all those together, so this is all flat layer. I've got yellow, I've got like an orangey yellow on my thing. Watch this. Hopefully it'll work. So if I go recolor, if I go recolor, look, look at that. Instantly changes the colour. And if you move that around, you can, you can like change. So you might just think to yourself, I want to change your outfit. I want to change. Look how easy it is. So I don't know why they took that out because for me, that's going to be something I'm going to use. I would love to know why they actually took that out. I want to keep the layers as well. I think. Yeah, I don't understand why they took that out. But but the way that you do it now, it's actually easy. Oh, what's happened here, look? But the thing is, what I love about this is, it's got other things. So I've got the eyedropper on there now. I've got, like, the flipping and also new layer. But the thing is, you can also, by the looks of it, have even more things. So you could start building up bunches of things. It's brilliant. So in a weird way, I'm glad that that has actually been removed because it introduced me to this quick menu thing, which I'm going to use that. I've already started using it for, for well, and the other thing is, what's this? That what they talked about, is there any layers on this one? Look, watch this. If you see that, look, you can sort of tap your layers. They said, what they, what they said was it, a good thing to do is put the um, layer selection onto your, modify plus the touch so what it means is instead of having to let's say i want to what have we got we've got the we've got the inks we've got we've got the inks the gesture and the colors and the, the that's the ground let's say i'm on the ground and i, I want to color that in so i'm on the ground i want to color the character in normally i'd have to go up here and do that what i said is that look you can do that so now i've actually moved on to that but the only thing with that is, I'm a little bit worried. If I get used to doing that, I'm a little bit worried. I might spend an hour, and I think I'm on. The, I think I'm on the character layer, but I'm actually on that layer. So I feel like I'm not sure whether I want to do that or actually keep it here because when you're going in here, you sort of know what you're doing. You know what layer you're on. Whereas if you're doing this, you do know what layer you're on, but you've sort of. I feel like it might be a, a bit. E it might be. It might be easy to sort of get confused. <laughs> I'm not sure, but that was another thing. And then we moved into the actions. This was cool. The text is quite cool as well. But they're actually missing a font. So the font that I use on my website, they're actually missing it. So, but the good thing is you can actually import fonts. So I've got to do that. We've got the canvas. So resizing the canvas. And then drawing grids, they're brilliant as well. I'll, I'll go through those in a minute. But you've got like perspective grids and everything. Oh, the symmetry one's brilliant. I like that one. I feel like that would be good for doing little random patterns and things. 
but the way that this all works is so perfection for me. The the in, the interface is perfection. We then went, went through the preferences, pressure curve and stuff. Start going through about the gestures and then the videos, and then that was it. We got into the projects bit. So this is where I'm going to be starting from next week. But the thing is. I had, a, I had about two or three days left when I got to that point and I thought to myself I don't want to start the projects until next week and um, me and my mum went down to Sortash which is the place I used to live so what I did was I spent a couple days this week out with nature so I took a little bit of a break I suppose but I still did my drawings so like today I did a load of drawings and stuff We'll go through that in a minute. So th these are my notes from this week. What have we got in here? We've got, well, this is all the things that make things pop. So the, the Gaussian blur, make things pop. I feel like that's the one I'd probably use the most. We've got the, what's this here? Oh, this liquefy, brilliant. I can't, I can't wait to talk about that. Change color, yeah, that's, that's probably one of my favorite things actually so far. Is that recolor? I'm not sure whether you can do that in Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint, but if you can, I've never heard about that before. So sort of, it, it sort of blew my my mind when I saw that. So I didn't I didn't believe you could do something like that. But commands can accelerate your workflow when working on big projects. That's it. That's it for those. What, well, what I do now is I'll go through here. Look. So what, what's the first thing we did? Oh, this is just me going through the quiz, making sure I know how to do all the things I'd learnt the week before. So this here is testing out the little blurrings. This is Peter the Penguin. <laughs> what all I did was I just I was just testing out the the blur effects. So now we're starting to get into the liquify. Look how as soon as I did that one, I thought this is fun. And then what I did was I here he is. <laughs> Look, that, what that is, is you got what you have to do here was you have to blur, but actually make the face not be blurred. So this was in the book as well. In the book it's much better because they're using a really nice image. But, where is it? it? That was on last week's look. I think, was it? No, it might have been this. Look, what they did was they've, they've got a character who's blurred. But what they've done is they've got his face in focus. So I, what that does is you, it's going to pull you towards his face. And all you've got to do is duplicate the layer, put your mask on and delete his face. And it will show the layer underneath, which is the one where he's in focus. So again, that's quite easy. But I feel like that's going to be quite a good effect. What else have we got in here? Look, this is this is Peter the Penguin with the liquefy tool. Look how look how cool some of these are. I like that one. I like this one as well. So the, what I thought to myself here was, all you could do is you could create a little character, like a little one minute sketch. So you got your character the way you want it, and then what you do is you start, you could use this liquefy tool to quickly push and exaggerate your shapes. To see what shapes are because you might end up with a better shape but you might not but it doesn't matter because this takes about five seconds to sort of play around with this so i put that in my notes i said like the liquify tools it looks to me like a great way to play around with exaggeration without really having to do much this is all the reco uh, i like this one i was mi mixing um liquefy with with the colours. Again, putting things together. Look at how he pops in, look. A bit weird. Oh, this was cool. This here, look, this was a, what I did, this was a sphere. It was a sphere that I used the, um, is it the distort? Or the, I think it's the distort tool. No, the warp. I used the warp tool. And then, look, it, it, it just by randomness turned into a cat. <laughs> Again, how cool. So, there's, there seems to be lots of ways to play around with shapes. To get, like, really nice shapes. 
this is the original this is using the curves curve this is like recoloring so that's using the recoloring tool but these are all flat layers as well this was me playing around with the text and then what I did this was the this was um Pepe from last week but I cropped this cropped it into a little like square thing this is using the symmetry tool this this thing here is brilliant I love that I do I love the tool look at him look he looks a little bit a little bit sad but it's so it's so cool playing around with that I thought this was using the perspective grid so again all of a sudden it's like wow you, you've got loads of stuff here that, like at your fingertips that's just playing around with layers this was from the quit this was me doing the quiz what I had to do here was I had to take that pink t-shirt and change the color of it on a flat layer so that one was with the recolor tool which took about a, two seconds this one I actually had to cut it out with a selection tool and then change the hue so that one took a lot longer so that's what I'm thinking the, the recolor is probably the best thing to do this here's little he was blurred and then I changed the colour of that one. <laughs> so this here, this is my favourite thing I think so far. You see, I got, I'll show it in a minute. I've got loads of little thumbnails. What I did was I took one of the thumbnails, blew it up, and then like coloured him, coloured him in. So this is little Peter playing with Pepe on a little seesaw. But what this did for me was it really highlighted how I don't understand lighting enough. So I've got a really I've got to really study lighting and this is another thing I think I might struggle with with this book is they might sort of assume that you already know how to do lighting and stuff so so that's 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 another thing and this this just highlighted how much I I'm struggling with certain things really but I, I would say it's foundations yeah I would say I've there's a lot of drawing foundations that I've got to study because most of my stuff was realistic this is some more little sketches I like this one here I'm gonna actually try and draw that properly so this is little Pete in my head it's like little Peter looking over a cliff edge and you can see like a valley in the distance and little little Pepe's in his bag with him and he's got, they're gonna go off on an adventure <laughs> I thought it was good. I like that one this is the same one, this this was supposed to be little Pepe looking over his shoulder. But again, like, it's quite hard to draw things. I can see it in my head, but I can't quite draw it. They, they were going to they were gonna come down a little slide here, but there he is playing with him. That was me trying to do it again, but a little bit different. Because I, I wanted some sort of connection between their face. But, in a, but I like that one better. But I want somehow to sort of have the expression to this is a gesture I then coloured it in as I was colouring it in I thought I was I was struggling with how to colour it in and then I realised at the end so what happens is if you use well the other thing I did was this which is my little Sophie but what watch this here look what happens is what have we got here so this this is what well, this here was yeah this here was the colours but it's also got the line art on it because what I was struggling with, it, watch this look. Right, if we do this here. Which one's that? I don't know which one that is. Well, hang on a minute. If we, let's get all these back. So I want to, if I duplicate that one. Put that up there. So watch this look. So if I, if I want it, uh, what I was struggling with was I wanted to have a layer, a separate layer to colour in, in to colour in the, the beak and stuff. But what I was doing was every time, so this here I wanted to be a colour layer. Every time I went to colour in his beak like that, it would colour in the whole thing. And then what I realised was if you make the if you make that a reference layer, when you come down here, you colour in his beak, not like that. When you colour in his beak now it uses the layer as a reference layer so I can go around the image colouring in colouring everything in not like that <laughs> I 
It's cool, isn't it? I can colour everything in. And now what's going to be cool about this is I can play around with those colours without changing the, the line art. So I only just realised that at the end. Because I was, I was doing it all wrong before. If we go into this one, this what's the seal look? Well, if I put these, if I put these into, if I put those there, look. So this was the this was the pencil sketch of that. And that well, what I did was I I took the um, I took what I did. This is what I did. I had all these little sketches on here, little like thumbnails. He was over here, a little, little tiny one. What I did was I cut him out. I blew him up to like be like that. And then I drew on top of him. A little bit of thingy. But some of these were quite fun actually. I thought. It's a little Peter and Pepe they're like chilling. <laughs> what, hey, did you hear that? They were old, holding hands here. Look, he's just like, oh this is the one where I, I might actually play the video in a minute. Yeah, I think I will. Shall I play the video? Watch this, look. This, this was the first one. It was just, it was, this was, they're, they're all very, look, see that? Look, I had to move the swing down. And that's when I thought to myself, wow, I'm actually, I'm actually learning things here. I was trying to draw a bike, but I'm not quite good enough, so I abandoned that one. Then they were in bed, I thought the bed was too big. I was going to redraw a little bed. Then I put them on the rocks for that. It's coming through. <laughs> I thought there's a little bit, tiny little bit of fun in this one. That's why I picked that one. Playing around little shapes as well. But the, the biggest thing for me with this one was trying to colour it all in. I couldn't quite work out how to colour it in. That's basically, that's it. I thought that was quite... I've got to get that back on now. So that, that was that. That was that. I think that's it for this one. What else have we got? I'll go through my notes very quickly. So last, on the last one, I spoke about two videos. So the two videos are actually, I put them in um, last week's blog post. The two videos, one was called how to use reference companion in procreate that's by the official procreate youtube i'll put these links in the description the other one was how to use procreate palette capture by by kate shanna and I'll, I'll also put those in the in the description as well so what did i put in my notes i put yeah the book is very glossy it's one of my biggest sort of negatives about the book is it's so glossy that if I put, look at that look. So I have to keep moving my light around. That's the only little, that's the only negative with this book, I would say, is the glossy pages. What have we got here? Yeah look, my, my, I was trying to work out the difference between masks and clipping masks. Masks let you erase the same layer, clipping masks let you draw on top. It's, it's again, it's simple when you know how. Still struggling to get comfy working on the iPad at my desk, but today, two hours, it was the first time I've spent about two hours doing drawing and I've not felt uncomfortable. So what I did was I lowered my chair down and I also put one of my cushions from my bed. I put one of my cushions on the desk, I had my arm on the hat, and it, it, for the first time it felt comfortable. One finger cut and paste menu doesn't work in the selection mode. That's, yeah, that was a little bit disappointing, this. So look, if you've got, let's say you've got something here like this, and I want to cut that out. If I want to cut that out, look, one, the one finger cut and paste doesn't work. So you actually have to use the, and this is why I don't really like using that one so much, because it's, it's not always 100%. See? <laughs> really, I should use me, this hand. So you've got to use that one, which for me that's not as 
consistent as the other one. But what I learned this week was, if you go up into here somewhere, I think it's this one, look, you can actually use t use the menu options. So that's that's probably how I'm going to do it now. When I, if I'm in selection, if I'm in selection, I'll use this. But if I'm if I'm on the canvas, I'm probably just going to use me one finger thing because that's that's the fit of. So again, I like that though. I like there's loads of different ways to do the same thing. You can also access the opacity via adjustments. So look, there's three ways to access your adjustments and um, access opacity. You can either do it via the, the layer selection menu. When you go up here and click on that, you can do that. You can you can also do was it was it no is that one it? I think it was a two or three finger. What was it? Two finger, two finger tap. See, I don't use that one now because it, I find it too inconsistent. You can do it like that, but you can also go up here. I've done that again, haven't I? Where is it? Adjustments. Up here somewhere. There's a. Oh, it's in here. I think when you go into. No, I don't know where that one is. <laughs> But I'm not going to be using that one. It's in here somewhere. Colour balance. I don't think it's that one. Might be the curves. No. Where's that one then? It's in the adjustment layer somewhere. Opacity. Look. Opacity is in the... Ah, maybe you can't access it on the... Um... No. They've taken that out by the looks of it. It's a bit weird, isn't it? That's another thing that they've taken out then. But I don't think I would have used that one anyway. Because I, I like using it over here. Quite cool. What else have we got? I like the perspective blur. More options and adjustments. Yeah, they've added a lot more options. So what they've added is, they've added something called gradient map, bloom, glitch, half tone, chromatic, aberration and clone so I don't know what those are because they're not taught these ones look this one I don't know what they do because I, I, they don't talk about it in the book so this is something I've got to look into I've got to look into what this this ear does but I think you need to be you you need to be working with colors really access what's this once again easy interface just tap and slide <laughs> tap and slide how cool is that Noise now has more options. Experiment. Looks like more, but it's still simple. So they've added a few more options to the noise. I've put here, wow. Masks start to make sense. You can use them to stop effects being applied to certain parts of the image. Yeah, this is when you start realising. You can, like, use... What you can do is you can use masks with selection, with adjustments. So you can start having, like things changing the motion blur with in certain areas and stuff yeah look this feels important but something I will forget masks start to make sense you can use them to stop effects being applied to certain parts of the image plus it's non-destructive so you can draw in white and black to reveal slash hide the blur powerful and potential yeah, liquify is a great way to push your designs to see what works. Push it without breaking the original design. You can, I feel like you could also use that for creating silhouettes. There's no preview anymore on the hue and saturation. I don't understand why they've done that. So, like, when you go in here now, if, I, if I'm if I'm in here on, on this, if I'm playing around with the colours of this look, th there's no option for preview there's no option to see what it originally looked like. So it's a bit... I don't know why they've done that. Well, yeah, look, lots of fun, but my brain needs a rest. <laughs> so that was... that's when I stopped for that day. What, keep going till you don't want to do no more. Mask... I, I kept writing down what masks and clipping masks were, so that I could remember them. Because this is something I feel like is quite important. And it's that thing about repetition. Recolor, move out of it. So this is, they in pro, when they updated Procreate to 
I think they called it 5.x. When they updated Procreate, they took the recolor out. So there's a video by Ghost Paper, which I'll put in the description. And it's, it's all about, well, what it's called is Procreate 5x. Where did the recolor tool go? So in that video, he doesn't actually tell you how to use recolor, but if you go into the comments, somebody explains about going into the thing. Look, the answer's in the comments. You have to use that quick menu. So it was actually in the comments that somebody worked it out. It's quite cool. But I'll still link to that video. Again, need to play with these on live paintings. That's the thing. I, I feel like a lot of this, you can sort of understand it, but you've really got to sort of do drawings and paintings to really understand it, I think. Actions. Never liked thought of changing keyboard commands in in future program, in case the future program messes it up. So, like, when you're using, like, Photoshop on the computer, you can sort of have little keyboard commands. So, so like, but what I thought was, I don't want to start... I always thought I don't want to. I'm going to use the default keyboard commands because I thought if I start messing them around, if I get used to say using Control S to do something, and then in the future update, Photoshop turned around and made that something else, you've then got to unlearn that. So I always thought it's better. It'd be better to stick with the custom with the um, default keyboard commands. I feel like the same as with the gestures, because if if you go into if you go into the thing, the preferences, you can sort of, like you can, you can change all of the gestures. But I don't, I don't want to. I want to keep the, I want to keep everything default. You can access copy and paste via the actions instead of gestures. I've put again multiple ways to do the same thing. Text renamed edit style. Oh yeah, this was another thing as well. This confused me a little bit. So when you put text in. In the book, in the book, where is it? I think it'll be that's the next couple of pages. In the book, the, there's an option called Edit Style, but they've actually, again, they've they've changed that with one of the updates. So now it's that that does the same thing. But what's a bit weird about that is I don't understand. Again, I don't understand why they um. I don't understand why they did did that. Cause that at first I would not have thought that that's, that that would be to edit text. I feel like it would be better for it to say edit text. Makes a lot more sense, I think. So I don't know why they changed that. But again, another little thing. There's little things that've been changed. Use the tap tap move to create shadows on text. Yeah, this was cool. So last week. <laughs> what was it last week? It watch this look. If I um, so I was thinking if I, I was thinking if I changed that. Well, hang on a minute. What I'd want to do is I'd want to. I'd want to. What I was thinking was if I. If I, if I want if I want to, oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, I've done it wrong. Look. It's not that that I want that, it's this one here. What I want to do is I want to, I want that text to be black. See again, I don't really know how to do that. Yeah, that's it. It's simple, isn't it? Little things are simple, but a bit, bit hard. What I thought was that you can you can use, well, oh, I'm getting confused here. What, what I want to do is I want, I want I thought to myself, it, this here, this here would be a good way to do your shadows, because you've got a lot more sort of. Look, see what I mean. You can sort of really work, work out the way to do the shadows using the fingers. I felt like it's a lot more precise than trying to do that. So that was another. That was a moment where I thought, ah, that that tap tap. What did I call it? I call it tap tap move. <laughs> the, the little tap tap move comes in quite handy, I think. What I also liked about this book, which I've only just realised, is they they highlight they highlight certain words with colours. 
So look, over here, like flip vertical, flip canvas vertically or resample. So there's there's keywords written. So it make what it does is as you're going through, you might be interested in cropping and resizing. It that pops out at you, so you can read about it. I like I like it when they do that. What have we got here? Look, we're on to the final final little thingy here. What have I put here? Oh yeah, action canvas reference is awesome. <laughs> That's what I put for zooming in, in on an eye, but working zoomed out. This is another thing. I'll see if I can do it on one of these. But for me, this was brilliant. So look, if I go, I've got me, I've got to, um, if I turn that on, look, you, what you can do is, you can zoom right in on his eye. So I'm thinking I can, I could like, well, I can sort of color in, I could do some oh I could do some colouring on here and it comes up over here so I can see what it looks like up close and at a distance at the same time. So I, again I thought this is brilliant this little that thing and it's so it's so easy to turn it on and off. But you can also zoom in on this as well if you wanted. So that's that for me I feel like that's gonna be quite I feel like it's going to be quite... How do you get the thing off? I don't know what's happened here. Hee <laughs> Well, let's see if it... I've never done this before. Let's see if it... Let's see if it keeps it when it... No. I wonder how you turn that off then. Once you lose a little thing, I wonder how you... I wonder how you get that back. I wonder how you get that back. Yeah, answers on a postcard, I think. If you know how to get the um, thing back once you've done that. Help us, please. What else have we got here? Yeah, the book. What's this look? Layer selecting is cool. Book says modify and touch. Modify and touch to do the layer selection. I did modify and pencil for the quick menu, which I love that. You can quickly move around your layers, but I said might end up way layer if not might yeah might wait might end up messing up a layer by accident because you're not really sure what layer you're on. I'm a bit scared to play around with a pressure curve in case I mess it up. As I do more art, I will play with the options in Quick Menu. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is as I'm as I'm using this more and more, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what. Why does it always do that? When I do that, I'm gonna, as I play this more and more, play around with the Procreate more and more, I'm going to see what options I want in here. Cause, and I might even add a new quick menu. Because I imagine you could have one for like sketching, and then you could have another one for like colouring, because you might be using different things for each one. But that, that's a thing where I've got to sort of, I've got to know what I'm doing first before. For what I put here, look, rest of the week will be sketching and playing and procreating nature. Next week is project time, which and then I said which ones am I most excited for. So today I did the quiz, I did my little Pete and Pepe, and then I got to do this video. And at the start of, at the start of the day, as I sat down to start drawing, I was a little bit distracted by the day job, but then I just said let it go. What I did was I put my music on and, and forgot about it. Uh, the, when what I love is playing music in your headphones and drawing. F for me, that's like that's that's heaven. I think. Little Pepe, that's his name now. Little Pepe. And then, well, what I, what I put was I said I can't work out how to you how to colour layers, but then I I actually worked it out because as I wrote that, as I wrote I can't work out how to colour layers. I thought reference layer. Because in the book it, it mentioned, was it in the book? I'm not sure if it was in the book or on one of these videos. Somebody said, said about this reference thing. So I played around with it a couple a couple days or last week or something. And I realised what happens is when you do that, if you start playing around here, it uses that as the reference layer for your 
colour. And I thought, ah, you could use that for colouring in your, your line art. And I've put, I enjoyed that. <laughs> it, was, it was fun, it was. I hope you enjoyed this one. As you can see, I'm sort of, I'm still very much like sort of confused by things as well. But the thing I'm loving is, it's just fun. What's that? Hey, it kept it. It's a bit weird. What I'm loving is it, it what I'm loving is how fun it is to just play on here. So it's cool it is. And I can see the potential of this. So all we've got now is next week we're getting into these projects. So what's the first one? Let's have a look. First one is this look. We've got a draw. We're gonna end up with hopefully a little thing like that. So I don't know whether I've got a I've got to draw that from scratch or or what. What are we gonna look look? This is what we'll be learning next week. You're gonna learn how to block shapes and lock pixels to keep brush strokes within the defined shape. Use clipping masks, add light and glow to the final illustration, integrate objects into their environment, experiment with brushes, embrace sketchy, quirky elements to add to the charm of an illustration. That's gonna be cool. So that'll be next week. I, I hope you enjoyed that one. And well, see you later for another one.